Hello one and all, in this one we're going to take a look at finding the rule that defines what it means to take the conjugate of a sum of two complex numbers. So in other words, the expression that you see on the screen. So first of all, remember that z sub 1 can be defined as x sub 1 plus y sub 1i. That's the definition of a complex number in its basic form. That means that z sub 2 can be defined as x sub 2 plus y sub 2i. So these are the details that we will need to make use of. So that means the following, that where I see z sub 1 in the top expression that can be replaced with x sub 1 plus y sub 1i, and wherever I encounter z sub 2 in the top expression there above my head, that can be replaced with x sub 2 plus y sub 2i, and keep the conjugation bar above the whole expression the entire time. Next, I'm going to regroup things, so I'm going to put the x sub 1 together with x sub 2, and I'm going to put the y sub 1 together with the y sub 2, so it looks like x sub 1 plus x sub 2, and then plus y sub 1i plus y sub 2i. Good. Let's move on. So just regrouping things, you'll see at the end why it's necessary. So that means I can put the x sub 1 and the x sub 2 together, say within a parenthesis, just to emphasize the parts that they are pretty much playing are the same. They're real parts put together. And then also what I've done is this. I put the y sub 1 and y sub 2 together within a parenthesis, and I factored the i out. So back at this step right here above my head, notice that y sub 1i and y sub 2i are present as terms. That means between them they have an i that can be placed outside. So that's what I've done over here. I've put the i outside using factoring. That's it. And I'm keeping a plus sign in the middle the whole time. But now notice something, that essentially what we have is a plus sign in the middle, and we have the real parts grouped together, and then the y's grouped together also. So what I can do is actually, I can actually apply the complex conjugation symbol. So it's going to give me the following. Take a look. You see that plus in the middle only, only the plus in the middle is affected by complex conjugation. So it's going to give me that negative in the middle for that reason. But the x plus 1, I'm sorry, x sub 1 plus x sub 2 stay as a positive there. And the same thing applies here. That stays as a positive for now. So again, I want to be clear on this. Only the middle sign gets changed. That's why it becomes negative. And during that process, because that is the definition of conjugation, the bar has to go away to indicate that, that, that its meaning has been applied. So next, I'm going to have the following. I'm going to distribute this negative i to each term like this. So the negative i will go over to y sub 1 and also to that positive y sub 2 for now. Look carefully at that step. It's going to look like x sub 1 plus x sub 2. So here I'm just dropping the parentheses. I don't need them anymore. And now this will become negative y sub 1 y sub 1i and then also negative y sub 2i. This is distributing the negative i to each of the y's. Now what I can do is I can group things together as follows. So remember that's going to be x sub 1, and I'm going to group that together with y sub 1i. So I'm grouping anything with the same subscript together because they come from the same original number, okay? And then that plus here I put in yellow just to emphasize the positive value in the middle. And then here I'm going to group, group the x sub 2 together with the negative y sub 2i, so that look, goes over here. But now if you look at this quantity above my head carefully, that's x sub 1 minus y sub 1i. So what is that exactly, that number? Go back over here. Over here, right? That's z sub 1, but it's conjugate. Because you see z sub 1 is x sub 1 plus y sub 1i, and has a positive in that position. Well, this is the same thing back at this step. The only difference is, is that it has its negative, which means x sub 1 minus y sub 1i has to be the complex conjugate of z sub 1. So in other words, it's going to look like this. To get rid of that negative, just put a bar above the whole expression and change the middle sign only to a positive. So it becomes the complex conjugate of z sub 1, which is x sub 1 plus y sub 1i, in other words. That yellow plus in the middle, you copy that straight down. Same logic applies for this one. So it's x sub 2 minus y sub 2i. So think about it. There's a negative sign there above my head. Go back to z sub 2 over here. That's defined as x sub 2 plus y sub 2i. That's the positive in the middle. But because back here this has a negative, it's telling you that x sub 2 minus y sub 2i you get from doing the complex conjugation of x sub 2 plus y sub 2. So you switch this sign back to a positive and you put the bar in there for that reason. I hope you've got that. That perhaps is like the trickiest point, but perhaps the most abstract of the points. Now think about this a little bit. So y x sub 1 plus y sub 1i, that is pretty much the complex conjugate of z sub 1. Same thing with x sub 2 plus y sub 2i, that is pretty much the complex conjugate of z sub 2, you see? So what does all of this allow us to conclude? That's really the fundamental question. So 
It's telling us that z sub 1 plus z sub 2 and the complex conjugate of the sum is equivalent to the conjugate of z sub 1 plus the conjugate of z sub 2. And that yellow plus is just getting carried straight down at this point, all the way down to here. That's what it's telling you. What it's telling you is, when you're conjugating a sum, it's the same as just conjugating the individual complex numbers and then adding them back together. So you can distribute that conjugation operator to each member of the sum individually, you see? That's what it's telling us. Well, that's it for this one. I'm just going to rest here on this bar a little bit. Thank you very much. <laughs> Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.